This video is very kindly sponsored by my friends at Squarespace who make it super ridiculously easy for me to build my own website. Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to another video. I hope you've been keeping very well. When I first went vegan, one of the biggest struggles that I had was finding meals that were not only quick and easy to make, but were also super delicious and were meals that I would have as staples throughout the week. I am almost six years into veganism now and over the years I have definitely discovered meals that I really enjoy making super frequently. So in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you five vegan meals I make and eat every week and I hope it inspires you to be creative in the kitchen and find your own meals that you enjoy cooking regularly. The first meal we are making in today's video is a peanut butter based stir fry and I have been loving this so much recently as you may have noticed in my what I eat in a week videos. It has definitely become a staple for me. It is super delicious and hearty but also packed full of veggies. So to make this stir fry I am first of all starting by chopping up some spring onions if you're not into spring onions and you prefer other onions you can totally do that as well I then also chopped up some garlic as finely as I could and then I put these into a large frying pan with a little bit of olive oil from there I then decided to chop up some of my veggies you want to chop up the veggies that are gonna take longer to cook first so I did my broccolini and my carrot to start I put the these into my frying pan and then I toss them together and fried them up for a little while again you can use different veggies in this stir fry if you would like to this is personally just what I enjoy and yellow capsicum is one of those things that I very much so enjoy so I sliced this up as well as some green beans and then I also sliced up some pak choy these veggies will take less long to cook therefore I set them to the side whilst I made my peanut butter sauce for the stir fry. So I started with some crunchy peanut butter followed by some soy sauce as well as maple syrup. Then I also put in some lemon juice with these ingredients, you can sub them as well. I also added some salt and water and I mix this together well. From there, I then added in the veggies that are gonna take less time to cook to the other veggies that are already cooking very well. I stirred this together well and then it was time to cook the noodles. These are some udon noodles that I get from the supermarket here in Australia. I highly recommend them. They are great and they don't like fall apart or anything when you're tossing them in the pan. So I cooked those up, I rinsed them, I drained them, I put them in with the veggies and then from there I of course added in the peanut butter sauce. So when I was talking about substituting earlier, if you don't have maple syrup but you have coconut sugar or rice malt, you could add that instead if you would like to. Uh, same goes with the peanut butter if you want to do almond butter or something instead. So then it is time to serve and this serves too so I highly recommend making it for you and someone that you love. I sprinkled it with sesame seeds on top and enjoyed this very, very much so. It is an absolute favorite in our household. I genuinely cannot get enough of that peanut butter stir fry. And when I was cooking it for today's video, I literally sent Kara a photo I knew she was going to be so excited that we had some at home. Not only is it one of my favorites, it's also one of her favorites and I hope that you will love it as well. Okay, the second meal we are making in today's video is very, very basic and it is avocado on toast. Look, there is no way that I could create a five vegan meals I eat every week video and not include avocado on toast. It's simple, I love it, it's delicious, it's filling. Okay, I'm pretty confident that we may have had a dramatic change of light happen in this video, but regardless, what I was trying to say is, I think I make a pretty decent avocado on toast. So I hope you like this recipe as much as I do. Okay, so for the avocado on toast, I of course started with an avocado to start. And then as well as that, I used some lemon. You could use lime instead if you would like. So I sliced the avocado up as best I could, 
put this into a bowl. I used a whole avocado for this, which makes a lot of this avo mix, just so we're on the same page. This is how I like it, but I know that's not how everyone likes it. I added some lemon juice as well as fresh dill and fresh coriander herbs are the secret to a really good avo smash. I also added in some spring onion. I started mashing this together and then I realized I completely forgot to put the salt and pepper in. What was I thinking? So I added in salt and pepper, mashed this together until it was a really, really nice consistency. And then it was time for the fresh sourdough. Sourdough bread just hits different. I love it so very much. So I sliced two thick pieces, toasted it well, and then I topped it with with my avocado smash. I also then served some extra lemon wedges with this because I love lemon so much. I sprinkled it with some sesame seeds and then I also topped it with some more fresh dill. This is really good. I hope that you love it as much as I do. Avocado on toast truly is a staple for me and I hope you enjoy making it at home. Before we get into recipe number three, I wanna say a big thank you to my friends at Squarespace for very kindly working with me on today's video. All of the recipes from today's video you're going to be able to find linked down below on my website and I actually host and create my website with Squarespace. I genuinely love using it so very much because it's super user friendly and all the blogging features are really good for someone like me who is uploading recipes. So if you are in the food blogging space and you're not using Squarespace I highly recommend that you do and as well as that something that I really love and that I'm going to be able to look look into when my ebook comes out in the future is the fact that there is also the option to sell products through Squarespace as well. I've actually done this through Squarespace at work before and it was super easy to use so yeah genuinely recommend so very much for anyone who is maybe starting a business or starting a blog or is just looking for a new space to create and design a website for their business or their project or anything <laughs> that they may want to share with the world. So if you are interested in trying Squarespace, you can head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash Amanda Ducks, and that will give you 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Okay. So the next recipe recipe we are moving into is creamy coconut lentils. I've been making this for months and months now. I have it at least once a week. It is honestly probably my favorite recipe in general because it is so easy to make. It is super filling. It keeps well for a couple of days in the fridge. And as well as that, it literally takes like maybe 20 minutes tops. So I always like to have my creamy coconut lentils with yellow rice and to make my yellow rice, I just put some rice as well as water, turmeric and garlic powder into a rice cooker. Sometimes I also add veggie stock for extra flavor or salt or pepper, really depends on the day. But today, this is what I did. I set that to the side, let it cook away whilst I started making my creamy coconut lentils. So I got a whole can of lentils and then I rinsed and drained these very, very well. I'm not sure about cooked lentils if this would work, but I'm definitely gonna look into it for the future. So then in a medium sized pot over medium to high heat, I put some spring onion as well as garlic that I minced in with a little bit of olive oil and I cooked it until it got nice and brown. Then I added in my lentils and I also added in coconut cream. Once again, today I made this to serve two people. So just keep that in mind that you can halve it if you are only making it for one. I then also added in some turmeric as well as garlic powder and cumin into this mixture. I also added in some pepper as well as some salt and then I mixed this together and I just kept mixing essentially until it got to the desired consistency that I wanted. When it came to serving, I first of all started with a bed of yellow rice and then I put some of the creamy coconut lentils on top. And as always with my savory food, I added some coconut yogurt on top. I then also added some fresh coriander for a little bit of 
flavor and a little bit of freshness. And this is my creamy coconut lentils, a big staple for me in my diet. I love it so very much. Okay, so those are my classic creamy coconut lentils, which I love ever so much. If you try them out at home, make sure to let me know what you think. Next, we are moving on to a creamy pasta. And when I was trying to decide what recipes I wanted to include in today's video, I turned to Kara, who's my housemate, and I said to her, we have creamy pasta every week right and the thing is that we do even though the creamy pasta tends to change every week we do make a creamy pasta in some capacity because both of us love it so much and for today's creamy pasta we are making one on a base of roast pumpkin and soaked cashews okay so the first thing i'm doing is soaking some cashews in boiling water and setting this to the side for an hour i am also cutting up a pumpkin and i am ensuring to cut the skin off i usually love skin on my pumpkin but not in this instance i'm putting this onto a baking tray and then drizzling with a little bit of olive oil just to make sure it gets nice and golden nice and quickly and i roasted this in the oven for about 40 minutes then i drain the cashews i put them into a blender with my roasted pumpkin which had cooled down i also added in some sun-dried tomatoes followed by some garlic powder and veggie stock i then added in nutritional yeast of course as well as the juice of a lemon and some pepper salt and then water then i put the lid on my vitamix and i blended this all together until it was nice and smooth it might take a little while to get to that smooth texture so just be patient with it of course while this was happening i cooked up some pasta whichever pasta you would like i had spirals happening in my house so spirals it was and then i put the blended sauce into a large pot followed by the pasta and i mixed this together until all the sauce was super evenly dispersed as well this serves this makes about three to four serves so this is something that you can prepare put in the fridge and then enjoy a few days in a row whether that be lunch or dinner or breakfast if that's your kind of thing so i served this in a bowl i topped it with some snow pea sprouts just to add a little bit of greenery you know it felt a little bit plain without it and yeah this is a really yummy creamy pasta i hope you enjoy it as much as i enjoy making it Here's the thing, creamy pasta is just always a good idea and I hope you love that recipe as much as I do. It's, it's really, really good. <laughs> okay, and our final recipe for today's video is a crispy chickpea salad. It's no secret, I love chickpeas so much. They are a big staple in my diet and I especially love having them in a fresh salad with the chickpeas really, really crispy. I hope you enjoy this recipe. Okay, so I'm first of all starting by pouring a can of chickpeas into a strainer and I am rinsing these and draining them before putting them into a bowl. Then I added in a little bit of olive oil, tossed this together so the olive oil coated everything nicely then i added in nutritional yeast followed by some salt and some pepper if you have almond meal on hand i also highly recommend adding almond meal it adds nice crispiness to them so then i put these onto a baking tray and baked them in the oven for about 20 minutes and whilst i was doing that i made a dressing this dressing i started with some natural coconut yogurt then i also added in some lemon as well as a little bit of olive oil some salt some pepper some turmeric and some garlic powder then i had no lid for this glass which i realized shortly after so i decided i would try and use a scrunchie with a lid that didn't fit as a way to like shake it all together and it worked for the most part until i spilled it all over my top um yeah anyway the dressing came together really really nicely it was super super delicious and then to serve i started with some greens this is just some cos lettuce and then i added some cucumber then i topped this with the dressing and i massaged it through so it was nice and evenly dispersed i then topped it with some fresh cherry tomatoes as well as all of the crispy chickpeas which i had made which was so good and some snow pea sprouts to serve. Super fresh, super delicious, but the chickpeas add a really nice crunch to it and I hope you will enjoy it as much as I enjoy it all the time. 
Okay, so that was my crispy chickpea salad and that brings us to the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and perhaps got a new staple meal to have every week in your diet. A reminder that the recipes are linked down below for you to check out and as well as that, if you are interested in using Squarespace, you can click the link down in my description box below. Thank you as always for being here, supporting me and my YouTube channel. I really appreciate it so very much. Have a beautiful day and I will see you very soon for another video. Bye.